How's it going guys? Welcome into this video. My name is Taradra. I'm going to give you guys a brief breakdown of what Magic the Gathering is. I know there's a lot of people in my community and a lot of people in the world that don't know what this game is. And I'm here to shed some light on it and kind of show you the basic beginnings of it. And if you have any other questions, you can feel free to reach out to me or anyone else in the Magic community. Magic the Gathering is a game that's been around for 26 years. It was first created back in 1993. Um, and acquired by a company called Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast may sound familiar to you. They've also created the tabletop game Dungeons and Dragons, and they also started printing the Pokemon game first before that got taken by Upper Deck, I believe. But Magic's been around for a very long time, and the cards have also changed, the environment has also changed, and the player base has grown by an exponential amount. If you have any questions, once again, like I said, feel free to reach out. But one question you may be asking is, how do I get into playing Magic? What do I, what do I need to do? Because I heard it costs money. It can be very expensive. You are accurate. It can be very expensive, but it depends on what you want to play and what you want to get out of it. For starters, I'm going to let you know that there's not one way you can play Magic. This is a blurry image. But there are many, many different things you can do to play. Starting on the left-hand side over there, Standard, Modern, and Legacy Constructed is where your most money is going to be spent. Standard is a name of a format that rotates every year to two years, and there's always new cards being added to it, but it's always the newest sets. That's how Wizards makes their money for the most part, is by selling the new packs that way people have to buy cards in order to build the best decks. Modern is a constructed format, that involves sets within the last 15 or 16 years. It's called a non-rotating format, but it also welcomes all the new additions coming in from standard because every new set being printed also, also added to that. As of today, as of about a week ago, there's a new format called Pioneer, which is in between modern and standard. It takes place within the last five years it starts five years ago it's now a new non-rotating format that is kind of modern light and has some other cards in it as well that can be discussed further and legacy is kind of the the grandfather of magic it it usually includes all of the cards ever printed since 1993 and if you want to get very competitive in there there are singular cards that cost upwards of five to seven hundred dollars a piece in order to play that game and that's where that's where the money is modern uh, a normal modern deck is anywhere between like eight hundred and two thousand dollars maybe even more standard you can get away with a couple hundred bucks beyond that you've got limited your limited events you can literally show up with nothing in your hands and you can play magic for four to five hours it usually costs anywhere between ten and thirty dollars you can walk in, you actually get cards, you actually get to keep the cards, and it's a fun way to play the game, and you can do that as often as you want, whether it be at a Grand Prix, your local event at your card store, or you can go buy the packs yourself and have fun on the kitchen table with your friends. Beyond that, you've got Two-Headed Giant, which is two people against two people. It's a multiplayer format. You've got Commander, which is a very casual yet competitive format where people just kind of throw in a bunch of cards and have fun playing with each other you can either make it as casual as you want and have the most fun ever or you can make it as degenerate and as expensive as you want it to be because people take a lot of pride in their commander decks and then there's endless other formats of things that people really don't play a lot of but there's di different ways you can play magic with that being said you may ask yourself i know nothing about the game what goes into the game of magic so for starters, Magic the Gathering is a game where you and your opponent are two wizards and you have a life total and the object of the game is to defeat your opponent, to run their life to zero or by other means that the cards say on them. And most of the times you play in a match and a match is a first person to two wins, not a best of three. And the reason why it's not a best of three is because your opponent can draw a game and if you both draw in a game, you have an option to play another game because you still need to have two wins to determine a winner of the match. What goes into a turn in Magic? This is a very lengthy discussion about one turn in Magic. You can pause this, you can read it over, you can look at it later, whatever you want to do. I'll just give you a quick breakdown of it. Beginning step, 
you always untap, you always have an upkeep unless rules say otherwise, and you always draw a card. The reason why you always draw a card is because our decks are limited in size and the game has to come to an eventual end. There's a couple ways you lose the game. You lose the game by state-based effects on the battlefield. You lose the game by being at zero life. Or you lose the game by drawing into an empty library. So if it's your turn and you get into your draw phase and your deck has no cards in it, you lose the game. It's a way for the game to have an eventual end. First main phase. This is where you do most of your things. This is where you play your land, you play your creatures, you cast your spells, and then you move into combat. It says combat's another thing. Combat is crazy. And then there's a second main phase, which is just like your first main phase. And then there's an end phase. End phase is where your turn comes to an end, but then you have to double check a few things. Do you have enough cards in your hand? You know, are the creatures that are supposed to be dead, are they dead? Are they off the battlefield? This is where you clean up your side and move to the next turn. And then this repeats until the game's over with. So why is combat great? What's up with combat? Here's what's up with combat. That's what's up with combat. <laughs> Combat is very crazy. It can be very crazy. And you can literally encounter each one of those steps in one combat phase. It's a lot to take in. You can pause it. You can read it. You can ask questions about it. But pretty much what it is is you declare that you're beginning combat. You declare attackers. Your attackers attack. Your opponent then declares blockers. Then there's first strike damage if applicable. Then there's regular damage. And then you end your combat and go to the second main phase. It can be confusing, I know. What goes into a magic card? Could be another question that you ask. Well, here's an anatomy breakdown of a magic card. Most cards are going to look like this. They're not going to be green. There's five colors in magic. There's white, blue, black, red, and green. Uh, they're, they're labeled as W for white, U for blue, B for black, R for red and green for green and you're probably going to ask why is you blue well because you got blue and you got black first letter of each one is b okay well black is first alphabetically because it's b l a so b is black well the second letter is l both of them share l so blue can't be l third letter is u so that's the only other letter that's different in the first three letters of the two colors so u is blue it's confusing, I know, but once you learn, you're, you are not blue, but you is blue. <laughs> Everything else fits. W, B, R, and G. Cards have a mana cost and a card name. The mana cost is important. Land is the most important thing in the game, and lands are what you need to generate mana in order to cast spells. The more expensive the spell, normally the more powerful it is, and it's more expensive on purpose because they don't want you casting it on turn one. They want you to wait a couple of turns so you can cast it later. That way the effect actually is poignant and, and justified for the time that you play it. Then in the middle of the card, it tells you where it came from, which is uh, important for identifying. And it tells you the card type, which is also important for timing of spells, casting of spells, and rules text. Then some cards actually have a rules and flavor text. And if it's a creature, it has a power and toughness. And then there's artist info and credits to Wizards of the Coast and et cetera, et cetera. But this is pretty much how most of your cards are going to look. There are different borders nowadays. There are, there's different borders. There's borderless. People alter cards. But this is pretty much the basic anatomy of a magic card. Now, another question you're asking is, how expensive is it to play? We went over the formats earlier. I talked about different things you can do and kind of the price point of it. But there are ways that you can play for little to nothing. There are some programs that Wizards of the Coast actually owns. There is Magic Online, which is it's free to play, but there's also an option to actually pay money. It's like $10, and then you have access to a few cards, and you can access some of their, some of their events that go on. But there are... There are hundreds and thousands of people that play. There are all the formats that you can play. Pioneer, Modern, Legacy, Vintage, Popper, Commander. Then there's Limited. If you want to buy packs, you draft, sealed, Premier. And there's multiple different ways you can play. This has a lower cost of entry than actual paper magic, but you are dealing with digital cards. They're not anything you're going to tangibly own unless you get into the Redemption Program, which is something that you can look into yourself. As far as being able to play almost entirely for free, 
There is a Hearthstone X-esque program that Wizards has released. It's called Magic Arena. And Magic Arena is a very beautiful game. It's a, it's a very um, graphical game. There's a lot of motion. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. And this is also revolves around the rules of magic, but it's flashier. It's prettier. It doesn't go back as far. MT or Magic Online, you can play anything you want with all the cards that ever existed in the game. This one is only limited to the cards that are currently in standard or just a tad older than standard. But you can look through here and you can see the cards and you can build your decks and you can play online with people and you can literally play without ever spending a dime. But I encourage you, if you're going to play this, to try to put a little bit of money into it because it does speed up the rate at which you end up getting cards. But it looks very much like Hearthstone if you've ever played Hearthstone before in your life. And that's pretty much how this one works. But that's that's pretty much it as far as the reaches of magic. Now you're probably wondering if I want to play paper magic, how do I go about taking that next step? Well, there's a bunch of different resources on the internet. You can literally just type in MTG Wizards and see all kinds of things. But I'm going to give you a few websites for you to look up. Magic.wizard.com, obviously, is the website for the actual site. You can go through all of their uh, events and esports and whatever, and you can go to the card database, and you can look at up Magic cards. Star City Games is the East Coast monster of Magic the Gathering. They hold events every other weekend, and they have an Atlanta Open going on right now, which they stream on Twitch, and they have articles and pro players and points, and they have a whole system for you to get in and get professional and buy cards and have the best time of your life. MTG Goldfish is a fairly new site in the world of Magic, but it has a place where you can come in here. They have articles. You can see pricing of cards and what's trending, what's not, and you can also look up metagames of different formats and see what's good and what's bad standard modern legacy pauper there's all kinds of things and it tells you the cost the cards you can click on it it takes you through you can see who's played what this is all magic online who's played what what the records were and it tells you how much it cost up in the top right hand corner mtg top eight is another website if you're really if you really have a scratching itch if you really want to be competitive this is probably one of the best resources you can do you can click on a format. It shows you the last few events that happened in that format. The site is slow to load sometimes. Give, give it a second. We got we to cheer it on. Go MTG Top 8. There we go. It tells you the metagame breakdown, which is what the top decks are in the modern world. And then you can click on different events and see what the top decks were. Star City Games Open at Indianapolis was on the 12th of October. If I click that, it tells me that Blue Red Storm won, and here's the deck. Well, if I want to know what Burrell Chief of Compliance is, you can click that. It shows you the card and tells you how you can buy it. It's a really neat resource. Uh, TCGplayer.com is another website you can go to to buy cards, and a lot of people are starting to take pictures of their cards now to show you condition to justify the price. There are some expensive cards. You never need this card if you're going to play Magic just beyond casual you'll never need this card ever i promise but that's pretty much it those are the resources that i would tell you to look at first uh the community is amazingly accessible there's really not a lot of people that will turn you down for your race your gender your orientation or anything like that feel free to come by and say hello let me know who you are let anyone in any community know who you are and and share your experiences ask some questions feel free to jump in Get your feet wet and have the time of your life. With that being said, though, guys, I love your faces. Thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a thing or two about the game of magic. It gets a lot more complex than that. There's 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 comprehensive rules. There's layers. There's it goes way deep. You don't have to know all of it, but it's good to be mindful of it because it does come into play in the most inopportune times. My name's Tarandra. If you like what you see, if you like what I said, this was all one take. Feel free to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, or you can come by stream and say hello. I'd love to get to know each and every one of you guys, and have a great day wherever you are, and I'll see you guys soon. Good night.